me coming up to like this vast wall um, to where I couldn't see where the top ended or either side, so it went on infinitely, it seemed. Um, and then the wall was uh, basically scaled with like these stone tablets that were about this big. And I went up to the wall and grabbed one, and when I took it off from the wall, it, I, I don't want to say it transformed, it almost seemed like it already was like a book. And I opened it up, uh, not thoroughly reading what was in it, but just kind of looking through it to see if it was what I was looking for. And uh, then I held it to my chest and the, the, the vision ended. And, um, I, after I shared it with Soon, um, I was also reminded of a dream I'd had earlier that week. Um, and in the dream, I and a, a group of other children around my age um, that I've known over the past years of my life, uh, have, we had all just exited this, this building that I don't have much detail on, and then um, we were about to make our way down a hill, and the, and the whole terrain around us was like kind of like a prairie, and uh, when we began to descend the hill, um, I ran ahead of everyone, and um, was basically running down the hill and almost like kind of a super, uh, sorry, a superhuman speed kind of way, like not moving my legs really fast, but kind of going down in really large leaps. So it almost felt like it was in slow motion. But um, when I got to the bottom of the hill, I uh, I reached this farm where in the middle there was growing like this this large oak tree or something like that, and all the kids behind me were following me down. Um, and that was the end of the dream and soon shared several things about his understanding on the, the vision of the dream um, and one of the things I remember is uh, my or it's kind of hard to explain but it, the, especially the dream it had something to do with the, uh, the leading away from uh, man's current understanding of what education is and it was actually something we had talked about a little earlier before I had shared the dream and the vision um, about how today's education has become so far off and uh, what's the right word I can't think <laughs> um, impractical yeah well yeah just no really that's not just uh, really standardized and not it's not functioning right Monk for any cult. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and what was the fact you had shared about the way people educate today? It was only oh the subject uh, that cross the board right now of all the world actually is a is a few men in those days academic few educator come together. I think I have a committee meeting. Like the days that we do, you know, then decide this is this is subject one that all the children to, to teach it started like um, in one setting that began to roll over all of Western world. So and uh, then right now becoming international standard, you know, so how to teach children to subject. So in those days. It's a new topic. It's a decided last century of 20 or 30, even prior to the Second World War. So you can imagine how much had changed in between time, you know. So, and uh, so, but those subjects, those way of teaching, never was fundamentally changed, rather enhanced and become more, more standardized, become a, a whole way of a whole to have academic or educational achievements. So I remember I grew up by talking about uh, to to Noah said that the education I have is so far removed from practical ways of life. So I know in here I have more than one You have a lab, you have other things. I don't think children even pay attention to it unless they really want to learn something, which is their own 
pretty much the own. You know, those facility equipment have good things, but in general part is a failure, a detached uh, of life. So you just study. I think the the one we call the Ben Sands talking about this caged mm-hmm. program life. Twenty years or the primary best time for young people was just boxed in this thing and give them a sense of um, I mean first thing cut off the parents and community input into children's life. Mm. I mean parents don't feel responsible for the children's education. Right. right. So. Yeah. That's a big thing. The second is isolated children from a community engagement. You can learn from elder, you can learn from people really doing things. To, you know, that time just sparks you away. So everybody engaged with you is based on the program that education set up for you. Parents are supposed to help me with homework. You, you don't even know why you help with the homework. <laughs> you feel good to claim their help in doing maybe doing yard work, whatever. <laughs> Not actually. <laughs> <laughs> Why should it be that? <laughs> so doing yard work is a very healthy way to practical teach the children to handle life, you know, have good attitudes of life at least. So at least it's hard working, you know, so but we just rub that all all off. Then we said play sports, be a good hard work. <laughs> I mean, this mindset, every so often said, the children give totally wrong idea of what achievement, what the character building look like, yet we talk to them things all the time, mm-hmm. as if they can be programmed. My topic is, I didn't talk to that with, with uh, no one in this topic, but it, it's this anxiety then for children as a young age, because they said, how oh, I achieve this, how oh, I succeed in this, as if it's as a sure lander mm. or bridge to success in life. That's a lie. I mean, do you remember, do you attain major knowledge that teacher tell you or the textbook <coughs> tell you today? Mm. Or you most of the thing you learn is yourself acquired? Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you remember your peers grew up how much to teach you? Mm. So called teamwork or whatever. Or you remember the elders, the ones engage your life, they, they taught you good lessons, you know. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to learn from peers most of the time. You don't have this basic respect. So, But it become a norm uh, of today's world. Mm-hmm. And because that culture emanated the more than rob a young man to grow in a cultural way, in a communal way, it's actually uh, everybody's supposed to be peer. You know, the parents have to teach child with respect, so called. You ask me what the lessons are respected about? Hmm. It's basically have them indulge their pride in their own ways. Indulge their independence, you know, to make their own decisions. Why the season, a young man's life in those times, is not supposed to make their own decisions. Mm-hmm. Right. Supposed to go through counsel to make the decisions, but mm-hmm. when we interfere with decision, what happened? Yeah. You're controlling, you're not encouraging them to be creative, to be independent, to mm-hmm. be whatever they name it. So we have a a name, and we talk out of some fundamentals mm-hmm. of um, I mean, human life mm-hmm. has existed culturally, historically, traditionally for society, community, society, mm. and culture for how many generations? You've taken so, the, the, yeah. the culture of community out of the yeah. educational process and made it school. Absolutely. I don't even talk about the U.S. scheme behind it. Mm-hmm. Because this whole design was not godly people did it. It was actually not for the benefit of young people we designed this. It was a mass producing of labor. Control people. Yeah. So those are evil people designing things. The mm-hmm. so fundamental goal is to cut our parents' influence and input over children's life. That's their goal. Then you think about that. So we have every reason to give discredit to those things. <laughs> so, 
and the uh, songs were bad, but uh, you guys need to know. So as a people, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Like communism, like Nazism, they wrong the society. You, you would think, oh, no, that cannot happen. <laughs> what communism came about, what Nazism came about, is a massive control people. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nazis don't have a disabled children exist, you know, so if you have disabled children, you're supposed to report, even your own self, there's no defection. If you have defection, you're going to go, they're going to kill you, basically. Older people, over the age, they don't care about you. They just literally leave me to you. They literally let you die. Unfortunately, that's what the, they're talking about the human race, you know, so that's which came from us. The idea called the Starbucks, you know, Starbucks in a great, great culture. I read this warrior, and when they're young, children about 10 years old, took away. Took away, trained them to be cruel soldiers, basically. And then decided, the whole society decided which profession you go, you know, what do you do? Then go on education. It's a mass program to use citizens. That's why there's the parents' job is just to give birth to a child, that's all. Mm. And the society control the feed the children. That's what Nazi tried to do. It. And uh, and uh, for sure, it's more than against Jews in a financial way, but it's against Jewish culture in, in a weird way. So, mm -hmm. uh, communism is the same thing. They were the Jews were actually labeled oh. as sons of the devil. Is that right? That's yeah. what uh, yeah. they were. But but I talking all those things in sounds. Conspiracy, but that's not conspiracy. It's literally what happened. Mm -hmm. So we come to, to this point. Nobody really examined. I don't want to drag off the topic. But here, you know, as a dream, reminded me a lot. I didn't reflect on one of my dream. You remember the school building replaced the, my my mm -hmm. whole stage, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, Ben has a dream about moving to a homestead. There's a farmer. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And there's all the tree stuff in there. Um, in the vision, um, I, I basically saw what was like a small lake that was right next to, or like on the left side, on my view at least, of a mm. mountain. Mm. And the mountain seemed to be at least at the top kind of leaning over the lake a little bit um mm. almost in kind of a i don't know if this is even a word but like a domineering way is that how you pronounce it where foreboding or yeah something like that um and this is sort of hard to picture but i saw this through some invisible force the lake basically produced miraculously this this wave that came from one end of the lake to the other to where the mountain was and completely consumed the mountain um, from this really from this very small lake um, with an amount of water that the lake didn't even seem to have previously contained and it overcame the entire mountain and that was the end of the vision mm-hmm <laughs> I, I I think I understand what it is, but let's your then do some understanding. Go ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> you go ahead. So did the mountain like exist anymore, or the it was like a wave that washed it away, uh, or it was it like it the water raised up and covered it? Yeah, more like a covering. It didn't seem like the mountain was moved at all. It just was completely consumed by the water. Hmm. I had a vision too. Okay. Um, Let's hear you as well. Um, it was when like you were saying that uh, Noah and Brett, um, Ben had a vision. Okay. Um, yeah, I was. I had a vision that we were in like Kenya or something. Just you? Me, yeah, just me and my dad, and okay. we were. It kind of seemed like we had just broken down like an old old church or something, like with a big machine, and mm. we were going to build a new church or something, mm. like build something new. Mm. 
and like in my vision we were like building it and stuff and that's all I remember. Mm. Okay. That's beautiful. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the mountain reminds me of it's it's almost like there's some correlation between the visions because you have in scriptures, you know, the psalmist and David and many others refer to the mountains of Bashan, mm. which were the, the high and lofty high and lofty mountains of the strength of man mm. and the rule of man. Mm. And then we have the prophetic word of the mountain of the Lord of Zion mm. rising up mm. to bring low the high places, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, Interestingly, the Lord with Noah and the time of Noah mm. in the flood mm. says the waters cover the face of the Earth, earth over to the years. highest yeah. place. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, he also promises that his glory will again or will cover the face of the Earth in the same way mm. that the seas cover. So you said that the water mm. seemed to come there seemed to be more than possible. Mm. And that was, the, that was exactly what happened in the flood as well, mm. was that the water came from above and below, from the depths and from the stores of heaven. Mm. You know? Mm. Um, mm. So in the last days, we see in this flood, not only the release of what God has stored from above, mm. but what he has imputed Mm. into the depths mm. of uh, it's reserved in the heart of man yes. the earth mm. you know and so both come out to mm. Mm. cover the land in mm. essence mm. you know mm. Um, mm. but the obviously there's a source and similarly with Elijah's you know vision there mm. There's uh, obvious prophetic correlations sure. with the tearing down and building up. Building up. Mm -hmm. But I think that it is very much uh, equated to a current time and work, and obviously specifically mm -hmm. among that people. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. <clears throat> I think that late is our ministry. Mm -hmm. Mounting is the culture of the world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to know what the effect is, but uh, we're going to have impact over the whole establishment, the we of the world is governed or covered. Mm. So, uh, mm, you know, as in, 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 in sickness, uh, it looks like but it's going to overtake or overcome the, the mountain. And the mountain often is going to uh, govern the seed or the influence but all the world culture stuff like that, so it's, it's a power, it's, you know, something like that, so.